call to order the uh, meeting for Burke County Board of Commissioners regular meeting for Tuesday, April 18th, 2023 at 6 p.m. I'd like to welcome everybody. I would like to remind everyone to please silence their mobile devices. And Madam Clerk, we have in attendance Commissioner Smith, Commissioner Birds, uh, Commissioner Carswell, uh, Vice Chair Carswell is out of town on business. No, he's not. Vice Chair Britton, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Vice Chair Britton. We got everybody in here now? <laughs> so, my, trying to, it's not hurting cats. <laughs> so, so uh, Commissioner Britton is out of town on, uh, on, on business. I would uh, ask for those of you that wish to speak or uh, co uh, co that will be uh, making presentations when you come to the lectern, please uh, activate the microphones before speaking or making motions so you can be heard on YouTube. This time, I would ask our good friend, Reverend Dr. Wayne A. Johnson, Sr. from Shiloh AME Church to lead us in the invocation. And I would ask you to remain standing so our county attorney, J.R. Simpson, can lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory on thy people, pour thy power. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour and for these days. Divine Creator, in whose presence we stand, we're grateful for another opportunity to see the dawning of a day that we've never seen in all the days of our lives, and soon this day will be over. And so we thank you for yesterday. We cannot thank you for tomorrow because tomorrow is a promissory note. And so all now we have is today. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the meeting of this August body. We would ask that your will will be done through those who have been elected to serve in the varied capacities in our county. We pray for the world at large that nations will not war against nations. We pray for the nation in which we live, where our coinage and currency reads, in God we trust. Remind us that happy is that nation whose God is the Lord. We ask now, Lord, that you would save us from weak resignation and to the evils that we deplore. We ask that you would reign supreme in our lives, in the state of North Carolina, in the county of Burke, in its surrounding municipalities. Bless us and make us a blessing. Keep us and we shall be saved from those things that would seek to rob us of our personhood and our walk with you, our divine creator. This we ask in your name and for your praise. And together we say, Amen. Thank you, Mr. County Attorney. Thank all of you. Gentlemen, that'll bring us to item number four, approval of the agenda. Gentlemen, if you had time to uh, review the agenda that was sent out previously, um, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the agenda as presented. All those in favor, thank you, Commissioner Burns. Signify with uplifted hand. That is four, zero, Madam Clerk. That brings us to approval of meeting minutes of August 2nd, 2022, Board County 
Commissioner's pre-agenda meeting and August 16th, 2022, Board of Commissioner's regular meeting. Gentlemen, have you had time to review those? Are there any corrections to the agenda? I mean, to the uh, meet, meeting minutes? If not, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I, I make a motion to approve the meeting minutes as presented. Thank you, Commissioner Burns. All those in favor, signify with the uplifted hand. That is 4-0, Madam Clerk. That brings us to presentations, and always one of our favorites is the Pet of the Month. This will be pre presented by Caitlin Sotomayor, our Animal Services Director, who has a very cute dog. She did not want to get up and come up here. She was napping all day in the front office today, but she is absolutely adorable. Um, so we will present our pets of the month. Maya is actually not my pet of the month. Um, every time that we do this on a Tuesday, this is like a very great day. Everybody gets adopted. Um, so this is Zoe. This is who we originally picked to be our pet of the month. Um, she was insane super crazy puppy. So she got adopted today to a family who can kind of keep up with her energy. So um, we are very happy for her. So that's why she's not here today and we brought Maya instead and then also our kitty cat um, her name is Pop-Tart and her mom actually saw her on our Facebook page and came to pick her up today so she went back home to her family so she's no longer available for adoption but both of those guys are very sweet we have a wonderful pet still at animal services available for adoption including Maya um, if your style is laid back couch potato, this is it for you. This is all she does. Um, <laughs> she's pretty great. So we did have a Cops and Slobbers photo shoot with our very own Sheriff's Office. So thanks to these guys for participating with us. I think they had a lot of fun, even though it was pouring the rain that day. I know our dogs loved it. Um, a lot of smiles out of these guys, and we just really thank them for everything they do for to keep us safe in our community. So I hope this was a little stress relief from them. Um, you know, these guys are people too. They have big hearts, so we are really thankful to have them and to be a part of this program with them. So um, those are cute photo shoots that we have, and I think we have a star back here in the corner. Um, just a quick news, we did do a press release on this, but we did have a dog test positive for rabies in the Lake James community, and this was in an area where there are, um, there's a lot of stray dogs out there, so we have been out there trapping. I think we've taken about 12 dogs from out there, and we still have traps set this week. Um, so we are working with our overseeing veterinarian. We will be hosting a rabies clinic once we can get all of that together, but we hope to advertise that for about three to four weeks before we actually host that clinic. Um, and just to remind everyone, it is state law to have your animals vaccinated against rabies whenever they're four months of age and older. So um, make sure you guys are current on those. If you are not sure, call your veterinarian. They'll be able to tell you and we can help you get updated on those. Um, as always, um, to reach out for any information on adopting and fostering our animals, we always have plenty to choose from. That's our contact information and that's all we have this evening. Now, if somebody adopts Maya, do they have to carry Maya? Probably so. You may require like a baby sling or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gentlemen, any questions or comments? Is the... Oh, go ahead, Commissioner. I just wanted to say thank you for all you guys are doing. This is, this is kind of like the highlight. Of the <laughs> this Kicks the show is, off. This one's it? especially... I know. I'll just leave her up here. <laughs> Therapy support. <laughs> Sounds like you want to take Maya home. Uh, we can make it happen. <laughs> he's, he's, uh oh, he's, he's stuttering. I'm going to give my wife your number. <laughs> uh, how full is Animal Shelter right now? Um, we're actually, we ran a low cost adoption event last week and we sent out a large transport. So as of right now, we have open kennels. Um, oh. We have about 12 dogs in the shelter right now and about 20 cats. Yeah. So we've been more full. <laughs> As always, y'all do an amazing job, so thanks for what you do. Thanks. We really appreciate it. And I'd encourage everybody to adopt or foster. Appreciate it. Anybody? Let us know. The two that I have are so much more energetic, I'm not sure how that would work out. <laughs> Be a good balance. <laughs> oh, 
We'll move on to presentation number two, proclamation declaring April 24th through the 29th, 2023, a spring litter sweep presented by Tanya Stevenson, our good friend, President Burke County Chamber of Commerce. How Thank are you. you? Good, how are you? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, um, manager and clerk, appreciate you uh, allowing us to come, although I really don't think I should have to follow Maya. That's just not fair. Um, so, we are so excited to be doing the Spring Litter Sweep. It is starting next week, um, next Monday as a matter of fact. I have Jenna Cole with me in the audience. She is our Litter Sweep guru, so if anybody has any questions, please see her. She'd be happy to help you. Um, I'm excited to say that we already have 16, 16-ish teams. We think it's 16 teams signed up, but 115 people have signed up for our litter suite, but we still would take lots more. Um, so if you've got a Boy Scout group, a Girl Scouts, youth group, church group, school groups, anybody, we would take you. If the commissioners want to have a team, hey, you guys could win the prize. You might not get to pick up as much this year, but, you know, it'd be okay. Um, we do want to thank Republic Services for being our partner for this. We are so thankful for, for them and the Chamber World. Nothing happens without our partners, and they are a great partner with that. Due to um, having Republic Services as a partner, we are going to be able to do recycling this year, so we're really excited about that. Um, that's something that was a passion for Jenna's, and she couldn't get it worked out last year, and so we're excited that this year people can actually recycle as well and it get counted towards their prize if they should win. Uh, the dates again april 24th through the 29th so next week um, please mark your calendars uh, the chamber does provide supplies like the vest the trash pickers gloves and bags and this year we have kids vest last year we didn't think about having so many kids involved and we had kids out on the streets with these long dress kind of vests um, but we do have kids vests this year and excited to have kids inv involved in this that was little kids we weren't expecting we were expecting youth but um, we do have cash prizes, uh, $500 to the winning team, $250 to the second place, and $100 to the third place. And uh, we will be uh, doing a kickoff event this Thursday at First Presbyterian Church. Scott, Buffalo Wild Wings will be catering. So uh, come on out, 4 to 5.30, First Presbyterian Church, and pick up supplies and get information. Everyone who participates does have to fill out a waiver form. Um, but Jenna has all that. It's all on our website if you need it at BurkeCountyChamber.org under uh, the events tag, tab. And I just want to say a big thank you to Brian and Kay, Mark and Alan for their willingness to help us and support us. Uh, we couldn't do it without the county and the convenient sites and all the great guys that work out there. So we just want to say a big thank you to, to, to the staff who, who have helped, helped us so much. And we just appreciate our partnership so much. And thank you to you commissioners for supporting this event. Any questions? Jim, questions, comments for Tanya? It's a great public service. Thank you for taking it on. Thank you. We appreciate the opportunity to do it. We've been preaching as commissioners about this. This has been a subject of ours for many years, and you taking the mantle, as Randy said, we really appreciate it. Doing great I was work. Listening. You absolutely <laughs> were, so thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your support. Thank you. Gentlemen, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve proclamation number 2023-04. Thank you, Commissioner Smith. All those in favor, signify with uplifted hand. That is 4-0, Madam Clerk. That'll bring us to our next section, scheduled public hearings. Item number one, community development. Zoning Map Amendment ZMA 2023-02 and public hearing. This will be presented by Alan Glines, our Deputy County Manager, Planning Director. How are you, Alan? I'm well, thank you. Thank you, Chairman Mulwee. <coughs> thank you, Chairman Mulwee, members of the Board of Commissioners, members of the public. Uh, Mr. Buddy Fisher, uh, through Venture Capital LLC, is requesting a rezoning um, for uh, about 2.92 acres of land on Hawksville Drive. This um, is part of a um, larger track. If I can get this going. There we go. In the Lake James area, uh, right across from um, um, Harris Wisnet Road. That is having a little trouble. There we go. Um, it's part of a large track of about uh, 30 and a half acres that is currently zoned general business. Now this is 
been in this configuration for you know almost 20 years or more and so um, Mr. Fisher has communicated to me that he feels that there's some potential to uh, sell residential lots in this area and would like it to be rezoned from general business to R1 which is the surrounding area um, that new land is is, is uh, demonstrated here uh, in the Hesher and um, I think I can point that out and um, we'll have frontage from the neighborhood side it feels like that will be a, a positive move um, to sell parcels and get some houses built Current zoning, oops, let me go back. Actually, I think we're a little ahead, but the current zoning is um, that general business, uh, the area is undeveloped right now. There's a little square taken out of the middle of that that fronts on 126, and that's uh, Morganton Savings Bank owns that parcel. Um, the, um, as I said, the currently vacant, um, the current zoning map, as you have there, the future land use map shows the area that's the next map um, is a basically lake overlay so um, that's helpful because uh, that area is noted for um, the whole variety and mix of uses that would include residential uses uh, water or lake centered uses agritourism all those sorts of things so residential is one of those items uh, one of those uses that would be welcome uh, under this um, area of uh, the Lake James Scenic area overlay. Uh, the planning board did review this at their meeting on February 23rd. They actually voted unanimously to support the request. And so we bring it to you now for uh, your consideration and um, any public comment, but I'm welcome to uh, welcome any questions you would have for me at this time. Gentlemen, you've had a chance to review the material. Do you have any specific questions or comments at this time? Just one, and I, and I maybe should already know this. All of that property is held by one person, correct? Correct. And they're wanting to just do a portion. Yeah, they'll do about three acres, and it'll end up being about four parcels that will front on um, Hawksville Drive. Now, they, in, in the packet, there is a, a little potential um, preliminary plat to create those lots. So there's still survey work to be done. Yeah, there'll be a final plat and that sort of thing that will okay. come through if um, if this is approved. Thank you. Jim, any other questions or comments? Thank you, Alan. If not, we do need to hold a public hearing, so I will now open the public hearing. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak to this issue? There being none, I will close the public hearing. Jim, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to adopt ordinance number 2023-06 as it relates to ZMA 2023-02, a request to rezone a 2.92 acre portion of PIN number 176448750 located on Hawksville Drive from the General Business District to Residential 1 District R1 and find the rezoning to be consistent with the Blueprint Burke Plan and also find the rezoning to be reasonable and in the public interest of Burke County for the following reasons. Number one, changing the zoning to residential would allow single family residential uses which are needed throughout the county and compatible with the surrounding area. And number two, currently the property is vacant and rezoning this portion of land will encourage its development. Thank you, Commissioner Carr as well. Those in favor of the motion signify with uplifted hand. Madam Clerk, that motion carries 4-0. Thank you. That brings us to uh, scheduled public hearings, item number two, BDI, Building Reuse Grant for the Project Piana in public hearing. This will be presented by the President and CEO of BDI, Alan Wood. How are you, sir? Doing very well, thank you, uh, Mr. Commissioners, um, Clerk, Mr. Uh, County Manager, and everyone else that's part of this wonderful crew. Uh, this is always one of my favorite times, and I will say that I was out at this business this morning uh, for a visit, and this is one of the, uh, truly a building that I really never thought we would get reoccupied. It is the perfect reuse project, and it will help uh, our tax base immensely 
when they finish their repair work on this site. Uh, with this project, which has been through the funders forum with the Department of Commerce and the amount that they are uh, authorizing us to apply for on this one is $200,000. I just got that information Friday, which would require a $10,000 local match. The county is the only jurisdiction on this site. Uh, the 25 jobs are paying on average $54,000 which is over 20% more than our current average of 40,700. And in addition to the $200,000 of building reuse, there is $30,000 of uh, training that would be supplied uh, through our workforce development at the community college. Uh, I, I think this is a great project. It's a company that's working uh, to grow and expand. Uh, I first talked with them as they were looking for a site about 24 months ago. Uh, and so that just speaks to how long a lot of times these projects take them to find a building and that gets harder and harder uh, for us every day. There just are not any other building. And <clears throat> for them to take this one and get it back in shape where it's habitable, uh, Primarily, this money will go towards uh, repairing the roof, which is roughly a half a million dollar uh, price tag just in itself. So I think it's a good project, and uh, it just gives us another opportunity to help business continue to grow in Burke County. Once again, great job, Alan. Um, gentlemen, questions, comments for Alan? All right. We do need to hold a public hearing, so at this time I will open the public hearing. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak on this issue? If not, I will close the public hearing. Gentlemen, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, it's a great pleasure that I make a motion to adopt resolution number 2023-07 and approve in-kind grant administration as the matching funds for the grant from the North Carolina Department of Commerce. Thank you, Commissioner Burns. All those in favor of the motion signify with uplifted hand. Madam Clerk, that motion carries 4-0. Alan, great job. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support. Well, gentlemen, that brings us to um, Section 8 on our agenda, informal public comments. I know we have several speakers signed up to speak. I would remind each speaker that uh, you have three minutes to speak. And the red light is already on at the lectern. So, Madam Clerk, who do we have? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would call Mr. Brad Camp. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for this uh, great example of representative democracy. I've not been up here to do this kind of thing before, so I'm going to start off simple. But it's not small to me. It's, it's important to me. And the timing is, is funny. Um, as I uh, come here to speak about this, I find out that we have a, a spring litter, litter sweep, which is wonderful because that's what I was going to speak about, but not as eloquently as you. But I, that's what I want to talk about is litter. See, I, I came from this to, to this beautiful uh, county. I was one of those who escaped from California. Uh, with my family, and there were many reasons we escaped California, and one of them was the was the wholesome uh, uh, atmosphere and the beauty of this county. And uh, one of the things I thought that I would not have to bring with me was the uh, was the trash from California, because it's Southern California, at least some parts are pretty trashy places. And and came here and see this beautiful county, but one of the things that grieves me terribly is the amount of litter and trash around in the county. Um, and uh, my wife and I, we walk this. We walk our streets every uh, every day. Take our walk, and I usually take a bag and pick up trash that people leave the night before. And usually, it's litter deposited from people throwing it outside their cars. And what a sad thing! I uh, I assume we have laws about uh, about littering, and uh, and I assume the uh, law enforcement uh, supports those laws and and cites people. But uh, it, clearly, it seems like it's not enough. My recommendation is that we um, just just something to think about, do a public uh, service campaign about the litter and trash 
in our beautiful county. Um, campaigns that include the maybe announcements in the newspapers, our local Morganton newspaper, in our local Burke County uh, magazines that get passed out, maybe our local radio stations. But even then, maybe signs uh, that could be put up in high litter areas to, uh, to talk about taking responsibility for keeping our community beautiful and keeping our county clean. And, uh, and for those people who can be uh, encouraged by those signs to do the right thing, great. I think maybe we should have signs posted, and I know signs are not beautiful things, and you know, as soon as litter improves, we can take down the signs. But until then, have uh, signs to let litterers know that there, is, uh, uh, there are laws in the books and there are actions takes, taken against littering and what the fines would be. And if the fines are not enough, maybe we need to increase the fines. Um, that is my goal, is to, my dream is to uh, continue to live in a county that is uh, absolutely beautiful as it is and we came and uh, to take care of the problem of litter and trash in our county. That's what I wanted to bring to you. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, sir. Madam Clark. Mr. John Flood. My name is John Flood. I live at 2411 Mountain Laurel Trail, Morganton, and I'm here to register my opposition to the continuing presence of the Confederate Memorial. I'm going to try and be succinct. Three reasons I oppose that, among many, are that it, it memorializes a cause that made war on the United States of America and sought to defeat this country and to dis dismember it. Also, the core, the, the core, the cornerstone and the foundation of the Confederacy as, as articulated by the Vice President was racial superiority, white supremacy, and slavery. And the, it memorializes a cause that started a war with this country by firing the first shot, which kills over 650,000 Americans, and was fought to serve a cause to keep the Confederate States of America the ability to hold on to their property which included in 1860 more than 4 million human beings. So we memorialize a cause that perpetuates slavery, or perpetuated slavery, but we don't give any memorial to the people who endured it, who rose above the hate, the violence, the mob violence, the church bombings, the assassination, the lynchings, to become um, NASA scientists and engineers, um, astronauts, members of the military that have risen to the highest ranks in the military, including the current Secretary of Defense, teachers, lawyers, physicians, state, state attorneys general, the U.S. Attorney General, members of the Supreme Court, congressmen, um, senators, and the President of the United States. We don't memorialize those people. I have a reading from a 13-year-old girl who suffered under a a government of um, racial superiority. Her crime was being Jewish, and she and her family and six million other Jewish people were murdered by this racially superior government, which admired the Confederacy a great deal. And don't think that Jewish children were the only people, children who suffered under, under the, the, those governments. What black children suffered seeing their parents sub subjected humiliated and they were sold as, as chattels. So she said about that statute and she speaks for these children, black children who were not allowed to learn to read or write and how lovely to think that no one need wait for a moment. We can start now. Start slowly changing the world. How lovely that everyone great and small can make their contribution toward introducing justice straight away. And you can always, always give something, if it, even if it is only kindness. And it's a wonder I haven't abandoned all my ideals. They seem so absurd and impractical. Yet I cling to them because I still believe, in spite of everything, that people are truly good at heart. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flood. Madam Clerk. Debbie Van Ordstrom. I hope I got that close. Hi, I'm Debbie Van Ordstrand. I live up on Moorhead Street, and I've been here for a little over 40 years. 
I taught 33 year, years here at Burke County. I taught um, in all sections of the county. I taught art, I taught industrial arts, and I taught reading to kids. I, um, I taught black kids, white kids, lots of Hispanic kids, and Asian kids all at the same time in my classroom. And I know, being here this long, that at least a third of our population, maybe more, are, are not <coughs> white. And um, their, their ethnicity is not white. And over half the population of Burke County, their, their heritage is not the Confederacy. Yet the statue and the flag on the interstate are the tallest images in this county, the biggest and the tallest, more prominent than Table Rock. Um, so these symbols often influence whether people come here or not. They do. And um, to live and to work and to have new businesses here, or a business here. We need more businesses here. We need to welcome diversity, and, and, and to a degree, a small degree, we have, but it, it only strengthens our community, and it strengthens our kids. And I ask that you remove that statue in the middle of Morganton. And I'm gonna leave you with a quote that I had in my classroom, no matter where I taught. And it's by Mark Twain, and it was actually, a quote from me or any other teacher who happened to come in there. I don't know whether the kids, I, I, I used to make them write all kinds of quotes, but this was not really one of them. But it's by Mark Twain and it says, loyalty to a petrified opinion never broke a chain or freed a human soul. So please think about removing that statue. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Caroline Avery. Good evening. I'm Caroline Avery, Burke Coalition for Reconciliation. I'm going to start off, Chair Mulway, and I'm going to thank you for attending the Symbols of the South Roundtable last month with your wife, Laura. As you know, this was not hosted by Burke Coalition for Reconciliation. We were guests too, just like you. This five series forum started in 2020 by Western Piedmont and was interrupted by the pandemic. Leaders of that group decided it was important to finish the series and hear from all sides concerning symbols of the South. As you know, there were representatives from churches, there were different racial and ethnic groups, as well as Bill Starnes from Gaston County representing the Sons of the Confederacy. Mr. Starnes spoke honestly, you heard him, about the loss Southern women suffered from losing their young sons, some 13 and 14 years old, who fought in the Civil War. Black mothers understand that loss. Many of them had lost their young children, some five and six year old children, who were sold and sent to Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, South Carolina, with no parent, no sibling, nobody. Imagine the depth of that loss. We can agree, can't we? that there was deep loss for blacks and whites both surrounding the Civil War. Yet, we have this Confederate monument and statue erected 50 years ago after the Civil War, 50 years after the Civil War, that lords over our county central gathering place and our downtown amphitheater, an idol to be revered. What a message we send to all who come downtown. I'm going to ask you to allow me, please, to remind you of some dates I know you know. On June 17, 2015, a young white supremacist walked into a prominent black church in downtown Charleston, and he massacred five, nine people, nine black people worshiping. Governor Nikki Haley said, enough. 22 days later, on July 9, 2015, Governor Haley signed into law a bill that removed the Confederate flag from the Capitol. How did North Carolina leaders respond to this massacre and Governor Haley's swift response? Two weeks after Governor Haley removed the Confederate flag, on July 23rd, the North Carolina General Assembly passed State Statute 100-2.1, 
making it very difficult for communities like us to remove these symbols of hate that cause so much harm. I believe Governor Haley acted because she could not live with herself for not doing the right thing. I call that brave leadership. I wonder what it will take, what will it take in this community? Children being killed, a massacre, church members being shot down, armed chaos on our square, for you to recognize that these symbols are deeply harming our community and our country. Once again, I ask you, I really plead with you, to join us in looking for common ground and solution. We're all on the same side. There was loss and pain on all sides. Can't we get together and find a solution that will not perpetuate harm in our county and in our country? Thank you so much. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Carla Kincaid. Good evening, gentlemen. Carla Kincaid, Morgan, North Carolina. I'm back again. Um, the latest I've read in, um, in information and the news in reference to the Confederate statue is in the town of Edenton. And right now that same issue is going on that we have here right in Burke County. And it's dividing their community just as it is here. And I also attended a seminar or a platform in reference to the uh, undue harm, undoing the legacy of Confederate monuments. And it was a lot of information. There were a lot of people there that had shared their views, shared they, their uh, work that they've been doing in reference to the statues as well. And the lady from Edenton was there as well. And what what I also want to say is that our young people do realize that they're statues. Evidence of that came this weekend when I was attending my grandson's AAU tournament down in Raleigh, North Carolina. And as we approached the convention center where the AAU basketball games were being played, my little five-year-old, which is very intelligent, she sees the statue of Sir Wally standing right in front of the convention center. Some of you may be familiar with that. And she asks, she says, Granny Carla, who is that man? Why is he there? And I told her it was Sir Raleigh, and he was named. That's who the uh, city of Raleigh of the, is named after, is this gentleman right there. Now, had it been the Confederate statue, and if I walk her in front when she comes this summer, in front of the Confederate statue at Burke County, Old Burke County Courthouse, what am I to tell her? What words do I convey to her about that statue? I can tell her it's a Kincaid, and guess what? She knows I'm a Granny Kincaid. No, I don't think we're related, but maybe we are. Maybe we need to go down to, to um, Griffin, Georgia, and see because that's where his family is, and that's where his body lies. That same statue to say memory. So I'm just going to end with what Edenton has put up in their town. As you enter Edenton, this is what they have. Welcome to Edenton. We apologize, which is in red letters, we apologize for the Confederate statue. And in white letters it's saying, we're working on it. So. I don't think we need to put up a billboard. Do we need to get a group together to put up a billboard that, that really counteracts what the other billboard says coming up 40 going west? The most loving place on earth, 28655. Think about that, guys. Think about it as uh, commissioners and the town and the county of Burke. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara Beyer. I'm Barbara Beyer. I live at 415 Alexander Avenue 
down here near town. Burke County strikes me as a very patriotic place. Every year, Veterans Day, every Veterans Day, we honor the veterans, we present the colors, they have a speaker, they get a lunch, um, the new, and the News Herald publishes articles and interviews of, with the veterans. And they also discuss the veterans that have died. On the new courthouse square, we have uh, statues and busts honoring those who fought in World War II, who signed up and agreed to fight. On the old courthouse square, we have the, uh, the Charters of Freedom, which are replicas of the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. So tell me, oh, we also have on the new courthouse square the, uh, the Veterans K Killed in Action Monument honoring all those who died in wars fought by the United States since the turn of the, century, turn of the 19th to 20th century. So why, why do we have a monument on our old courthouse square honoring those who fought a war to treasonously secede from the Union in order to maintain the institution of chattel slavery. The stated purpose of this monument was to honor Civil War veterans, but it also served as a tool of intimidation of black people. That high statue that used to be the courthouse and people would go in there and there would be this statue tells me what, who, um, what, how much justice these folks can expect. At one time, a man was lynched, a black man was lynched, and they put his body on the monument. <coughs> Two years ago, there was a ugly confrontation when whites from other counties came to defend the monument because they had heard erroneous <coughs> rumors that somebody was going to take it down. So, and this group was heavily armed and initially they outgunned our local police. So I think Morganton and Burke County need to get that monument off the courthouse grounds. I think we can be open to finding a better place for it rather than necessarily destroying it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. That's all the folks that pre-registered with me. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Well, gentlemen, that'll move us on to the consent ag agenda. I'll ask our county manager to review those, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Several items for consideration uh, this evening. Item one is a resolution in support of uh, uh, the Industrial Commons uh, uh, grant application uh, for a $5 million allocation from the General Assembly to support a redevelopment project um, that you heard about, obviously, at your pre-agenda meeting. Uh, item two is a pro proclamation for consideration declaring Ma May 4, 2023 as a National Day of Prayer. Item three for consideration is a reappointment to our Child Protection, Child Fatality Prevention Team uh, from the clerk. Those reappointments are, again, in your packet. Item four, uh, it's a project ordinance for the Jonas Ridge convenience site from our uh, general services. I would remind the board the project was approved uh, back in November. This is simply uh, setting up the individual project ordinance in the middle and in, in, in the amount of one point five six seven uh, million dollars. Item five is your monthly tax collection report for March 2023 uh, for review and consideration. And item six also from the tax department would be your monthly release and refund report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, happy to answer any questions you or the board may have. Thank you, sir. Any questions, gentlemen? If not, what's the board's pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Thank you, Commissioner Burns. All those in favor, signify with uplifted hand. That is four zero, Madam Clerk. That'll bring us to items for decision. We have several of those, gentlemen. The first being 
approval of the Dogwood Trust Grant Opioid Planning Grant. This will be presented by Brian Epley, our county manager, as well. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is the um, uh, this item has been before you several times, uh, but as a quick reminder, uh, the Dogwood Trust Foundation uh, we have applied for a $275,000 grant uh, that can be allocated um, about $160,000 to staff. We have about $50,000 of that allocation that must be used for travel, uh, th another 30 for space utilization. Uh, and then the final 35 for marketing and some miscellaneous expenses. Uh, the, the purpose of the grant is to help uh, with long-term planning uh, associated with, uh, as we all are aware, the two rounds of opioid settlements that the county uh, is participating in at a national level. Uh, those dollars have began flowing to the county already. Um, and this, again, this, this grant funding will allow us to utilize in these <coughs> uh, methods uh, with um, um, to help plan and utilize the highest and best use. I would point out that um, as your last last month, we recommended continuing that because there were some uh, refinement of performance outcomes that we wanted to uh, re re continue to work through with the uh, uh, grant officer from Dogwood Trust. We've done that. We feel confident with the outcome measures at this point and are uh, very pleased to recommending approval of this grant and authorize staff to finalize uh, the grant agreement with the Dogwood Trust Foundation. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Gentlemen, questions, comments? There being none, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the $275,000 grant award from the Dogwood Health Trust, including refined outcomes and performance measures for the opioid planning grant and to authorize the local health director to execute the grant agreement on behalf of the board. Thank you, Commissioner Carswell. All those in favor, signify with uplifted hand. Madam Clerk, that is 4-0. Thank you, Mr. County Manager. That will bring us to um, decision item number two, General Services, Award of Construction Bids and Project Ordinance for the East Burke Convenience Site. This will be presented by our good friend Mark Delahunt, General Services Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Who's learned how to work the clicker. Yes, I, yes, I did. Thank you. Got the clicker, but not the microphone, huh? Okay, well, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. As I mentioned uh, at the pre-agenda meeting on April 4th, we had out for bids at that time, construction, bids for construction of the Eastburg Convenience Site, which were replaced as, uh, which will be a replacement for the current location on Road Hiss. And before I get into the bids that were received, for the benefit of anyone who was not here at that time, I'd like to do a quick review of the information that was presented pre-agenda. This first slide gives you again a uh, little snapshot of where we are, the slide on the left, and uh, where we plan to go, the slide on the right. Um, this next slide is of course the property that was purchased in August of uh, 2021, 14.7 acres off of Highway 70 in Collins Springs. Uh, it was purchased as part of plan to locate this new convenience site. In addition to its location, this property uh, has several other features which are noted along the side there that made it a great acquisition. Uh, got plenty of road frontage. Uh, there's water sewer already available, which that's a major plus. Uh, you'll notice that little uh, uh, part on the bottom down there. It has access to a, the ramp at exit 116, so it'll have some interstate access possibly too. It is already zoned industrial. The property includes uh, a, one, a 200 by 100 building and another one alongside it, 100 by 50 foot building alongside of it. it we placed a security fence around that and the property still has plenty of space for uh, future other county needs. Uh, as I mentioned, it's got the buildings on there. The, the big one there again is the 200 by 100 and the one off to the side, the 50 by 100. We hope to make that the one day water uh, sewer maintenance facility. Um, this is the inside of that. The one on the uh, left would be the smaller one. Of course, the one on the right is the uh, 100 by 200 uh, foot building. The, uh, if you'll notice the ceilings in there are like 30 foot high. So uh, it can be a fine airplane hanger if need be. 
Um, this uh, next slide is the overall site plan, uh, which not only shows the convenient site, but it also shows what will one day possibly be the location of a water sewer office building that uh, close to the road there. Although it was not part of this project, it was taken into consideration as we looked at the overall site design for this property. Uh, this is, gives in more detail the actual convenient site itself. Uh, some of the features here. Uh, the traffic pattern at this location, unlike the current location, will allow for flow through traffic with an entrance and a separate exit. Uh, right now, at the current site, people have to enter and exit at the same location. It causes for uh, a little bit of traffic jam, especially on a Saturday. Uh, you'll see the three compactors lined up. Uh, the two on either side are for MSW, meaning household waste, and one in the middle is actually for recyclables. So the thinking that if you have some uh, household waste and recyclables, you will go through one of the middle lanes. If you only have household trash, you'll go through on uh, either side to deposit that. Uh, and this uh, compactor in the middle, it'll be single stream recycling, meaning that uh, no longer will the folks have to sort all their recyclables. It'll all go into one bin and be recycled at the uh, recycling facility in Conover where it ends up. Now, uh, last Thursday, five bids were received, with the low bidder being Moss and Marlowe Building Company out of Hickory. That bid was the amount of $1,221,000. The equipment, such as compactors, recycling boxes that are part of this project, have been quoted at $125,000. It is anticipated that this project may require about $33,000 in professional services, such as engineering and surveying. Additionally, I'm requesting a 10% contingency of 138,000. This brings the total amount of funds requested for this project to $1,517,000. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Jim, questions, comments from Mark? Mr. Chairman, this would probably, <clears throat> in my opinion, after the number of years we've worked on this, this will be the most modern convenience site that in, probably in Western North Carolina when we get this convenience site up. Give us this opportunity to recycle too, which I think has been uh, kind of unheard of, which we're going to do at the Jonas Ridge site too. So we've taken two opportunities to make this county a whole lot better off than what it was. Hopefully it might help uh, with, with uh, trash on the highways. But my question is, Mr. County Manager, how long is it going to take us to get the old site down and what's it going to cost us? The existing site? Is that the question? Road Hills Road type. Mark, do you have? The, the, to demo the old site, that has not been factored in. Uh, I don't factored. think there's a whole lot there. Uh, well, be my question, there's not a whole lot there except for a hole in the ground, correct? Do it you is actually. That we don't have any problems trying to fill that hole in the ground. It is actually the site of a previous old landfill, closed landfill that requires. Uh, uh, post-closure monitoring and uh, although I didn't mention it, uh, Department of Natural, Natural Resources after us to begin some work there and has been for a while to do some remediation, some insert some monitoring wells and trenches and drainage so we can begin the uh, some of the post-closure requirements that are part of that. So I know that doesn't answer your question. I will get you an answer. That's an extra question, but also the, one of the reasons I ask it, I think there's money is going to be available to help us close that thing down. I think if, if we we need to do a little uh, asking and, and digging a little deeper with DEQ, I think there's money there for us to help help close that down. I want to make sure we get right to this closed down properly. That was that was just a really nasty nasty place. I think there's some actually future potential uses for that property. Uh, not could build anything, but it's a wide open uh, space. It could be utilized for some other things. I don't have any ideas available, but uh, I think it's uh, common that those closed landfills do get utilized in some fashion. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, gentlemen? Uh, I just will say that this is this is long overdue. Uh, when I lived in that end of the county, that was the convenience site that I used. And it was, you nearly needed four wheel drive to go in there and make the circle and come back out. I mean, it, it's, it, it's been long. 
needing replaced. And I, I appreciate this, and I really like the plan. Let me also mention the contractor who was the low bidder. I did a little search on them. Better Business Bureau gave them a, a five out of five stars. Another rating system on the internet uh, that had 17 reviews gave them a 4.8 out of five. So I believe they're a well-qualified, responsible bidder. Jim, any other questions, comments? Great presentation as usual, Mark, thank you. Gentlemen, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we award construction of the bid to the uh, East Burke, for the East Burke Convenience Center in the amount of $1,221,000 to Moss Marlowe Building Company, Incorporated, and authorize additional funds to cover contingencies and equipment for the project in the amount of $296,000 and appropriate up to $1,517,000 of the general fund balance authorizing the transfer of projects to the solid waste fund and adopt the related project ordinance number 2023-05 further authorize the county manager to execute the contract on behalf of the board subject to review and or revision by the county attorney thank you commissioner smith all those in favor of the motion signify with uplifted hand motion carried four zero Just for a little levity, I've noticed Johnny's had to use just the one arm tonight. He, he's not been able to be ambidextrous. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so, gentlemen, at this point, we'll move on to reports and comments. We'll start with our uh, finance officer, Margaret Pierce. No reports tonight. Thank you. We'll move on to our county attorney, who I think is um, wants to maybe wait till the next meeting to give the presentation. Uh, that's right. It just to let you know that the county manager and I have been extremely um, vigilant in closing out a real estate project that I think the county is going to be uh, very happy with. That's all. Thank you, sir. I know you've been putting in a lot of hours. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Caleb, can you show that photo? April is Guardian Ad Litem Child Advocate Month, and um, earlier this week, well, that would be yesterday, um, the county manager and I participated in a celebration of that month, and the Guardian Ad Litem volunteers, um, this is the, uh, the photo I was talking about earlier, um, every child deserves a voice, a voice in court, and um, at this event, the the volunteers that um, serve over 200 children in Burke County um, were recognized for their service. And if anyone is interested in, in learning more about becoming a guardian ad litem, please contact Amy Kincaid at 433-3311. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And I will say Amy does an amazing job with that program. I went to Oak Hill and Freedom High School with her, and she does a great job. So um, we'll move on to Mr. County Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm um, just happy to uh, report that um, uh, this past week we had a, a good work session with the board and budget development continues to uh, progress nicely. I'm, I'm just continually impressed with uh, the professionalism of our staff and the partnerships that this county has in the community. Um, I too would, would recognize what um, uh, Kay and I uh, had a little bit of time with that staff yesterday and uh you know those folks make a real difference in the community a uh, real difference they work hand in glove with our social workers and our foster children uh, the court systems that they're, they're a voice oftentimes to a group that doesn't have a voice and um, um you know just just recognizing their hard work is, is uh, remarkable so uh, they shared yesterday that um, uh, only a few years ago there were only four guardian ad litems in Burke county uh serving more than 200 children now there's they've grown that to 40 um and 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 i shared with them we have a similar goal um with foster parents we, we have a very low number of foster parents licensed parents here in Miami county and uh it's a goal of both of uh social services director corey and myself to try to grow that over time and that's just a it's just a good thing to be a, a, be a part of and it makes a real difference in the community so thank you for the update thank you sir commissioner smith i have nothing sir 
Mr. Burns. Uh, just quickly, uh, one, I'm just in awe of being here every time we have a meeting. I want to thank everybody that came out and spoke to us, everyone who just came to listen. Um, I want to thank our staff. I want to acknowledge we have a lot of heroes, and uh, often there are days set aside for those heroes, and I did want to acknowledge that today is National Lineman Day, Lineman Appreciation Day. So if you happen to know a lineman, tell them thank you. You know, they're they're those guys who run into the storm when things are going haywire. And uh, I know C Commissioner Britton, if he were here tonight, he would probably echo those sentiments, but we they're a tremendous asset to our community and we appreciate them. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Mr. Carson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I'd like to start off by saying that we just, uh, Scott and I attended the NCACC uh, Board of Directors meeting in New Bern over the weekend. Uh, we heard a, I would almost categorize as a sad presentation from Cody Kinsley, the Secretary of Health and Human Services uh, regarding Medicaid expansion and also regarding our Department of Social Services. The uh, fact that even the Department of Health and Human Services itself was several hundred employees short. But the horror stories we hear about the children that have to lay in the floors at DSS. Uh, my daughter got called up to go in the other night at midnight to sit with a 17-year-old boy and a baby, and the only place we had for those people to sleep was in the floors at DSS. We have a lot of problems, you know, and I understand and I appreciate the fact that we, we, we get to come in here and, and, and we talk about those things, but there, there's other things out there too that I wish we could wrap ourselves around, and that, that being one of those things that if it was a way, and as we move on to the future and we look at, at the health department and the DSS building, I hope there's there's a way that we can start taking care of the children a little bit better. These kids are, are, are products of, uh, unfortunately, with parents that are drug addicted most of the time. And, and the, it's not the children's fault they have nowhere to go. They don't know what's happening to them. They don't understand being housed in other people's homes. They don't understand having to, to be treated the way they're treated. It, it just, it breaks my heart. It really does when I, when I have to see that. So, it, like I say, we, had, we heard a great report from Cody, but the answer was, we don't know what to do. The state doesn't know what to do. You know, you stand there and you can talk about it. You can we cry about it. We can try to come up with ideas, but these poor children here in Burke County, we we've got a we've got a lot of issues in front of us that, that we're going to have to have to really fix when it comes to some of the, those areas of concern. Also, gentlemen, I want to remind each one of you, commissioners, if you will, please. Uh, NCA District 13 and 15, which we are uh, 13, and Scott is our district chairperson for District 13. We're having our annual district meeting at, uh, uh, on the uh, oops, Thursday. Thursday, April the 20th, at the uh, Trine International Equestrian Center. I encourage you guys to be there. This is where we, as a group, get to, along with the county manager and the county clerk, I want all of you to go. This is where we get to go down and, and talk to our folks and talk to the other districts about some things that we can do in, in the region and, and some of the things that are issues that are out there. Plus, we get to hear some of the things that other counties uh, have to go through uh, there. So I encourage you to to uh, please be sure to put that on your calendar and please be there if you can. And Scott will mention some of the other activities we have. But uh, that's all I have right now, sir. Thank you, Mr. Carswell. Well said, and I do encourage. Um, I did ask um, my counterpart that is from that down in District 15 if we get to ride a horse. He said that was a hard no, so um, don't anticipate that. But uh, anyway, uh, I will um, say that we've been very busy as commissioners. Obviously, it's budget season, but we're. Um, I want to com commend our county manager and staff again for all the work they're doing. The budget is. Um, um, been intense for them. It's been a new process. Um, while not only doing budget, reassessing everything in our organization, um, our county manager's been doing that. 
um, proposed county investment plan, uh, capital investment plan for the next five years. Uh, we have a lot of big things going on in the county, more so in a condensed time period than I've ever seen and it probably has ever been done here in the county. We're looking at everything um, from the ground up. And I, uh, I just wanted to commend uh, Mr. Epley. I didn't know he could get this much time, uh, this much done in this little bit of time, but I, he won't crow about himself, but it's been pretty amazing. But it's also been amazing for our staff and all of our employees, because all of our employees um, have participated as well. And so um, for those of you who don't know, we have 650, <coughs> roughly 650 full-time, 150 part-time. So um, it's, it's an intensive thing. But I did want to um, commend him on that while also giving presentations out in the community, which he did recently. And we'll be doing one at the History Museum next Thursday morning, a coffee talk. talk at, okay, I may get this wrong. Maybe 10 o'clock. Does that sound right? We'll say it's 10, but um, you can Google it. But um, a coffee talk, and we're going give, to give a presentation on stuff that's... Uh, you just said okay thank you tanya tanya just said it is at 10 a.m so i encourage folks to come um we're going to be talking about a little bit about the capital investment plan um reevaluation people are excited about that um, um and just some of the broader topics and then those that attend um, can, um, can ask questions obviously uh i would also um remind uh, everyone as we uh, mentioned every at the end of every meeting please don't litter pick up trash, cover your loads to the landfill, which is probably the, one of the biggest problems is people don't cover lo the loads to the landfill and convenient sites. Um, as we mentioned earlier, please adopt or foster a pet from animal services and spay or neuter your pets. We have several upcoming meetings. Uh, May 2nd, pre-agenda. May 16th, our regular meeting. May 23rd and 24th, gentlemen, will be, uh, be County Advocacy Day. Do we know who is going yet? And if you're not sure if you're going yet, please let Kay know as quickly as possible because she has to make plans for us. And so um, reach out to her, see if those dates work. Um, that will be dinner event at the Raleigh Marriott Center. Um, showcasing county stories and initiatives will be with other legis or their legislators. Um, there will be a reception will uh, begin at 5.30 and dinner service begins at 6.30. On Wednesday, May, uh, May 24th, coffee and donuts from 8 to 9 with a program beginning at 8.30. So for, for important information, um, you know, so I would encourage those that uh, uh, have not made this trip to Raleigh. It's always a, a good, effective thing to keep in communication with the legislators. We've obviously got close relationships with them and but it never hurts to show up in Raleigh in force so I'd encourage us do to do that as well at this time I'll turn it over from to Madam Clerk for vacancy announcements <coughs> thank you mr. chairman members of the board we have the following opportunities for citizens to be engaged in county boards and committees the adult care and nursing home community advisory committee city of Morganton Board of Adjustment and Planning Board for the ETJ, Burke Senior Center Advisory Council, East Burke Center Senior Advisory Board, Council on Aging, Burke County Board of Health, Partners Consumer and Family Advisory Committee representing the Traumatic Brain Injury Seat, and the Hickory Regional Planning Commission. And again, I would just throw a plug out there for the Guardian Ad Litem program uh, to uh, if you're interested in that, you can always see me and I can get you in contact with Amy. So if you're looking for work, folks, Madam Clerk can put you to work. And if you want to know about county government, we can introduce you to it in many different ways. There's many different avenues if you just saw. So we would encourage you to reach out to our clerk and please sign up and be an advocate out in the community. At this time, gentlemen, there is no need for closed session, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. In honor of the Commissioner Britton, so moved. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Burns. All those in favor, signify with uplifted hand. 4-0, Madam Clark. <laughs>